Hey, this is Brennan from Comic Con. Uh, today we have a very special guest with us. Um, uh, one of our Comic Con alum, uh, James Ferguson, who used to be a senior editor. Uh, he went on from Comic Con.com to uh, edit comics, and now he's writing comics. And uh, we're here today to talk about a Kickstarter that drops on World Pizza Day, February 9th, 2024. It's called Slices of Life. Uh, James, why don't you tell us what this book is about? Yeah, it's it's really uh, a fun book in that it's it's set in a world without pizza. So essentially the whole catalyst behind this is the president was seen eating pizza with a knife and fork and he was merciless, mercilessly ridiculed for it. And um, as a revenge to everybody else and, you know, as a retaliation there, he banned pizza across the country. So it's just completely a uh, world without pizza now or at least the country without pizza. Wow, that's that's tragic. That's uh... yeah. Also, I like the I, I didn't know the origin story of like how that came together, but it's really like it's one man's ego that. that oh, yeah. You could, you could probably guess who was in office when we thought thought about this idea is. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so pizza, pizza as a political device. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Who are some of the gang that are working with you uh, on this yeah. book? So this really came about because we had a, a fun, um, you know, creator chat, writer's chat with uh, with myself, Mario Candelaria, who's uh, went on to write Kilchella and, um, you know, uh, working on a few other books, The Fog Line and um, uh, Devil Water. And then uh, Phil Butehorn, who's been in tons of different anthologies at this point, and Matt Sumo, who most recently has uh, released Bardic Verses, uh, original graphic novel. So uh, we had this group together and we were chatting and, and, um, the, and, and that's where this kind of came about. And then since, and I'll talk about that in a little bit too, but um, then we went in and had to find artists to draw all these stories that we wanted to make this anthology together. So um, we've got Laura Helsby, we got Roberto Duque, uh, Darren Vogt, who did uh, my, my story and uh, Jenny Odio, as well as uh, Dan Buxa, who's writing or drawing a, uh, a story that kind of loosely interconnects all four of the stories in the book. Okay, so do you have like a a, a narrator? Do you have a, a crypt keeper that's uh, kind of guiding you through the journey, or do they just kind of? It's like... actually a pizza delivery person. Uh, so we follow <laughs> her journey through this through the uh, stories, and that it's she's she doesn't appear in every single story. It's more that she's she's the kind of through line for everything. So we mm. instead of just having like a block of text in the beginning saying like this is the world, like you know this is what's going on, we see that as an introduction through her. And we follow her journey to take us from one story to the next and then wrap up. So it's like a, a little bonus kind of story um, to inter, um, kind of inter, intermingle each one of the stories. And it also kind of makes it stand out from a typical anthology. So instead of just like, blah, here's everything and like a big table of contents, it's, um, sure, sure. you know, everything kind of woven together. So is it one of those things where you kind of got to look for her in the story or the stories? That no, she no, no. She's, so again, she's not in every one of them. This is she's an add on for this is, yeah. is how it works out. We talked about the cover. The cover that I saw is really interesting. You kind of take all of the uh, pizza icons, and we have a ton of them. There's the Noid and, and Papa John yeah. Snatter and all those guys. It's, and It's amazing and how it's... many there are when you sit down and think about it. You know, like we yeah. it, when we pitched the idea, we're like, I mean, how many are there? And then there's a lot of them. But uh, yeah, mm -hmm. they, we, we reached out to Pete Collins, who's the, who's the artist for Bardic Verses, who worked with Matt. Um, he also did a variant cover for uh, an another comic book I wrote called A Real Slobber Knocker. And um, it, he's just an amazing, amazing artist. He did he did like everyone's business cards for a while too, and then mm -hmm. um, we we pitched him this idea of a kind of Days of Future Past, an X Men Days of Future Past, but instead of the um, you know the, all the mutants behind on the wanted posters, it's pizza icons. So you, you know it's it's folks like Little Caesar, it's the uh, you know Chuck E Cheese, and then he he kept running with it and finding even more stuff to put in the background. So if you look around, you could see all like the you know th mm -hmm. there's a nice little amount of Easter eggs, but you know, when we saw this, like Pete just blew it out of the water. It was this like we had this idea and we're like, I think this could work. And within a couple of days, he flipped this thing around and it was just jaw drop. It is, it is a very, very sharp cover. And it, it it does pay tribute to that other cover. And it's obvious, but it's really funny because, yeah, there's there's uh, Little Caesar. There's the Noid. Do you know the story of the Noid? It's actually really interesting why they stopped. No, using but the I mean, Noid it just Thomas. seems like a biz I mean, it had its own video game, right? Right. No, the thing is, is it was a very popular uh uh, spokesperson for the brand but there was a, a guy named like john noid or something like that. i don't know his first name i'll look <laughs> it up but um he was like uh delusional like paranoid that uh the pizza chain domino's was making fun of him and targeting him personally and so he made this whole big deal out of it and i think there was something about like some violence in some way or something like that so they were just like you know what it's not even worth it um so they just stopped using the the noid 
Wow. That's, I mean, it, it, imagining a, an entire um, ad campaign, a whole, you know, slogans and, and uh, mascots derailed because there's some, you know, whack job who thinks that we're making. Oh, here it is. Here it is. In 1995, convinced that Domino's Pizza was out to make his life miserable, <laughs> Kenneth Lamar Noyd died by suicide in his Florida apartment. Ooh. The pizza chain immediately stopped using the Noid in their marketing thereafter. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll put a damper on things. <laughs> Uh, right. Like that's just, that's, that's a marketing nightmare. They say no press is bad press, but that's bad press. <laughs> yeah. That's rough. So where oh. that came from was, uh, you know, we, in the chat, Mario actually just threw out this idea of like, oh yeah, like, you know, a world without pizza. And then we all mm. started spitballing on that, you know, like a typical thing where it's like, you, you know, you got a few friends and everyone just kind of like starts to pile on with something. And then we realize, Hey, we, ha we have something here. Like this is, this is something fun. What if we just made this, you know, everyone was pitching anthologies and stuff like that. But this was like one that we can make ourselves. And, you know, it's fun to make comics with your friends. So that's what we kind of uh, just started to do. And like, it took a little while, as I, as I mentioned before, you know, you know, someone else was in office at the time when we started this. So this has been several years in the making, but then it was a matter of reaching out to different artists, finding, uh, you know, who could work with the book. And now we're finally here um, and getting ready for World Pizza Day and the launch of this Kickstarter. Reading your story, uh, not to give too much away or whatever, but I was really reminded of like Fahrenheit 451. There was the same kind of vibe where mm -hmm. this thing is taken away that is essential uh, to culture, to learning, to whatever. And pizza may not be essential to, to learning, but it's definitely a huge part of our culture. Um, 100%. I was talking to uh, producer Eric here uh, before we started. And it's something like how many uh, acres of pizza the United States in square acres? Oh, Let me see. Man, like, wait, like eats in what? Like a day, a, a month, a year? in a day i mean i had two slices myself last night um but uh i'm not sure like i mean that's i mean square acre i mean what a hundred thousand like i don't even know how much that is like i can't quantify that in my head as to like what that means well so my my house is on a quarter acre so four mm -hmm. times the size of my lot is mm -hmm. one acre and uh, and and in the United States of America, we eat 100 acres worth of pizza every single day. I was way off with 100,000. So that's, <laughs> I, I vastly overestimated everyone's love for pizza. And you told me about some really interesting uh, rewards uh, for backers. Uh, so why don't you uh, tip your hat a little bit about what some people can expect if they back this uh, this comic on Kickstarter. Yeah. So obviously the book itself. So we you know have digital copies. We've got physical copies of that. We'll also have early bird discounts. So if you back within the first two days, you'll have some, uh, you know, a couple bucks off for those. But um, you have the opportunity to be drawn into two of the stories. Two of the stories are, mm -hmm. are not fully illustrated yet. So um, you have the opportunity to be drawn into those. Um, one of them is Old Man Gino's, which is um, Phil's story about uh, it's illustrated by Roberto Duque about a um, uh, like a flat uh, a pizza box folding competition. That's happening mm. underground. Everything happens underground now in this uh, in this <laughs> world. Um, and then the other, you could also get a cameo into um, pieces, which is Matt's story. It's illustrated by Jenny Odio, and um, that one you could actually get a speaking role because there's a couple of characters. There's a there's a dealer. There's a cab driver. There's a couple of other folks that you can get drawn into the book for that. So those are pretty cool. Like those were those we had similar things when we did uh, a real slobber knocker, and it's it's funny mm. how into it people get with that because you know it's like it's it's you get to actually get drawn into a comic and like, I didn't think about it as much uh, when I, you know, when I started backing campaigns and stuff, but then when you see it and, and like, you know, that kind of reaction to it. And like, I've shown like my neighbor actually backed and got into a uh, slobber knocker and I just showing mm -hmm. him the progress of it, like blew his mind. So it was just really cool yeah, to see. Yeah. No, it is. It's, a, that's one of my favorite uh, backer rewards. Um, I've done it a couple of times. One of them is in a Houdini story. And it's like, oh, yeah. I share a frame in a comic book with Houdini. And I don't, I mean, you haven't obviously seen all the changes that have happened mm -hmm. here, but you know, I've got Houdini stuff all over my house. I love Houdini and you know, I'm written into a story and drawn on a page as a Butler in, um, <laughs> <laughs> is it it's uh, Edison's house because yeah. it, the story is Edison versus oh, cool. uh, Houdini and so I'm one of Edison's butlers in this thing and I was just like look you know, like, it's it's really now cool that's, that's thing, a you're gonna like you're gonna cherish that and show that off to people so that's also like free marketing for those creators to like yeah you're gonna now be bragging about this for ages mm -hmm. well and I've got like six copies of it too I bought like all the different yeah. covers and that's you know it's yeah. it's motivation it's like you know it's buying school pictures or something and then cool. what, one of the other things we're doing too with this is again in a way to make it stand out from like a typical um, anthology is since it's it's all pizza oriented uh, instead of just a typical thank you page uh, we'll have it's going to be listed as a uh, like a pizza menu 
So mm. if you back at the, you know, the basic level, you'll, your name will be added as one of the pizza toppings, but mm. there's a limited uh, amount of folks that for, uh, have like higher naming rights. So if you have a, basically you'll have a name, a pizza named after you and you can put whatever you want as it. So if you had like the Brendan and this is what, it, this is what's on it, however crazy it mm. might be. If you have like a Ninja Turtle type of pizza, that's got like all kinds of crazy toppings on it. Cool. You know, we'll put it in there. So it'll be a limited amount of folks that have that top tier. You know, if I if I back at that level, I got to look at what your what the costs are for each level. But if I back at that level, it's going to be an actual pizza from uh, Mary's Pizza in Sonoma County, California. The the go. Mary's Combo is the best pizza in the world. So <laughs> yeah. it is. I promise you. If you're ever in Santa Rosa, California, Mary's Pizza, get the Mary's Combo. It's the best pizza you'll ever eat. You, um, you mentioned my story. Can I can I talk a little bit about that too? Because I think no, this is, no, no, not at all. all right, that's no, cool. go, ahead. go ahead. Let's talk more. Let's, about let's hear it. Um, I didn't want to give any spoilers, but if no, you want no, to spoil no. so, like, be, you... what I've been describing this as it's it's the warrior meets jingle all the way that's that's really the way to think about it it's it's about oh, a guy okay. who's trying to make his late wife's pizza recipe for his son they're growing apart and this is something he wants to do to bring them together um this was a story i wanted to tell you know not just about pizza obviously but um it i wanted what well, since i started writing comics i wanted to do something about parenthood and i couldn't mm -hmm. like figure that out for a little while and uh, i mean my kids are younger than the the, the kid in the story but um, it was something where it's like, well, how do you maintain that connection? How do you keep that going? And and this was an, an interesting outlay about like just making sure you have that connection with family, with you know between parents and kids. And it what came out in this wonderful way. And and Darren, who drew this, drew and lettered and colored this this story. It's like when I tell you this is the story that I'm most proud of um, of everything I've created so far. Um, I mean it. It's it's just. The, the design work, the expressions, the the, pers the personality and just like sheer joy mm -hmm. that is in this story. Um, I mean, there's, there's, there's craziness. It's, it's like a madcap kind of thing. But Darren just knocked it out of the water with this um, or out of the park, excuse me, with the uh, with the designs for this and, and, and the characters that come out of this book. So it's I'm I can't wait for folks to see it. No, it's really cool. I did read it and it is touching. And, you know, I have seen the videos that you've done, the unboxing and things you've done with your kids. And I've seen you interact with your kids and it. It really comes through that you are a father and that you have these uh, connections with your kids and that you would want to maintain those connections through tragedy because, you know, um, he's a single father now yeah. and he didn't start as a single father. But then also the lengths that people will go uh, to keep the connection, uh, the lengths that they'll go to make their children happy, the lengths that they'll go, uh, you know, to uh, kind of maintain that even in the face of, of diversity. Uh, right. It's it it's it's a fantastic story. Yeah, I liked it. Thank you. I appreciate it. So I have some questions for you, Mr. Pizza yeah. Man. What's up? Uh, so we talked about how much pizza we eat in the United States. Which country do you think consumes the most pizza per capita? Or per capita? I, mean, I, 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 I want to say America. Um, just from like... You would think. And, that's and why like, this is shocking. Know, like pizza Fridays and stuff like that. And it's not? It's not. It's hmm. not. It's Norway. Norway. Well, aren't they like one of like the happiest countries in the world? Like that would explain oh. it, right? There, I mean, correlation, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, in Norway, per person, they eat about five kilograms, which is just over eleven pounds of pizza per person per year. Okay, I mean, yeah, I can and it's not, it's not fresh pizza. It's not fresh pizza. It's the what? frozen stuff. Oh my gosh! They, I mean, they don't like yeah. fresh pizza. They eat eleven pounds of frozen pizza per year in Norway. Oh my gosh! That's I feel so bad for them then in that case because like I, I'm I'm a New Yorker, so like you know I'm oh, yeah. we're biased over here with pizza. That's that's the thing. So like you know I, yes, I've eaten in other states and it's fine. I know I I respect what you're saying. I'll I'll, I'll give Mary's pizza a shot, but like. New York Here's the pizza, thing. Man. So, like, <laughs> okay, so certain areas are known for certain things, right? So bagels in New York are obviously right, and uh, pizza in Chicago, pizza in New York, uh, Northern California is known for their sourdough. Okay. So if you take a really well-made pizza with all the fresh toppings and everything, because it's the produce capital of the world, and then it's one of the dairy capitals of the world, so they've got freshest cheese, and then it's a sourdough bread crust. Okay. You take all those things and put them together. It's like the perfect storm of pizza. All right, all right. I'm, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not dissing it. I'm just saying, like, New York pizza is up there. You know, that's what I'm getting. Oh no, it is. It is. And the thing is, is I've never had a bad slice in New York. Not one time. I've had oh, bad yeah. pizza in California. A lot of bad pizza. Yeah. I had bad pizza last weekend at the hockey game. It was terrible. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. And then uh, one other thing that I thought was really interesting because you know I. I I was sitting here just, just okay, we're going to talk about pizza. So I went through and I found yeah. all the interesting pizza facts I could find. The most expensive pizza in the world that you can order right now. 
What do you think? Uh, price mean, tag in in thousands. Oh, I'll give you that hint. Thousands. I mean, I don't know, like ten thousand dollar pizza. I close, seems, close. It's really? twelve, twelve grand for, for the what? Louis. Is it, is it size? Is it or is it toppings? Like, do they put like? Is that? Wait, wait, no. Where do you hear about this? Where do you hear about this? The experience is is absolutely bonkers. It's called the Louis the Eighth Pizza. It's made by Renato Viola at a place called the Agropoli in Salerno, Italy. It's 20, 20 centimeters wide. It's eight inches. Uh, we have a pizza or we have a picture of the pizza uh, that might go up as an overlayer or might go in, in in his post. But it's a 20 centimeter pizza. That's about eight inches. It takes 72 hours to make. They come when they're delivering the pizza. They come with their own uh, plates and silverware that you have to eat it with. That's the only way you can eat this pizza. It's got mozzarella de buffalo, which is buffalo cheese. It's got uh, flamed lobsters prepared in cognac, three types of caviar, uh, Mediterranean shrimp, and Australian pink salt that's apparently hand-picked from the River Murray. And while... Entirely un uh, like unnecessary. Like, just give oh, me it's not done. Water. Like, what is this? It's not done. It's not done. So while they're serving you this pizza, they also serve you three liquors. And those are Remy Martin Cognac Louis the Eighth, which is a thirty-five hundred dollar bottle. I'm assuming you only get like a, a snifter of this yeah. because the amount of the alcohol adds up to like nine grand by itself. Well, that's probably uh, why it's so expensive. Yeah. Champagne Cru Claude de I don't know how to say this Mesnil 1995 is a four thousand dollar bottle, and then they finish you off with Cardinal Mendoza Sanchez Charter Real Romate Finos, which is a two thousand dollar bottle. Okay. I mean, that's again, like the, the, the alcohol part of it is, is that, so that's why it's so expensive. The pizza itself is what I would, you know, but I guess they're pairing the wine. With it's the an pizza. experience. Yeah. It's an experience. Yeah. yeah. So you've got a small, yeah. And that's the thing too, that, that adds to the cost is there's this world famous chef that's serving you the pizza. There's a sommelier that comes with him. And then I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm guessing there's a bus boy or something that takes yeah. away the plates. You're after just, you're, yeah. Something. You're trying to make like a big fancy experience. Like I don't need a, I don't need like a, fancy michelin star restaurant when i want a pizza like i'm, I'm gonna that's eat what one I, that, that oh, you know, you know what? Walking this place is, sidewalk or something this has got to be a michelin rated uh place the oh, agropoli yeah. salerno i'm i'm 100 percent sure yeah. uh february 9th uh yeah. it goes live uh what is the the do you know what the the pdf tour or uh the pdf tier of backer rewards costs for the lowest uh the lowest tier? Uh, yeah all, all in all we're, we're looking at about 64 to 68 pages in story um mm -hmm. the the early bird It'll be uh, fifteen dollars regularly. Thirteen dollars will be the um, the digital reward for um, the early bird. Uh, for okay, digital. sixty-eight pages. That's substantial, and fifteen dollars for PDF. That's not bad at all. Yeah, and it'll be twenty uh, for the uh, for the physical copy. So oh, so not. not I mean, that's what that's easily what you'd pay in a comic book shop for yeah. a graphic novel. We wanted to keep it, you know, pretty pretty slim with that. And then again, it's like it's something that it's an anthology. You got you got a bunch of cool stories on it. And and frankly, everyone that I've spoken to about this when I describe them like it's it's set in a world where our pizza like their eyes get like light like lit up and they're like, "Oh my god, wait a minute. Wait. Hold on. So, I think there's we're we're scratching the surface here. So, I think that if this is successful, we can definitely consider doing even more and invite other creators into it because we've have had mm -hmm. we have had people ask, "Hey, if you do another one, can I can I get in?" You know, can I can specifically I about pizza it? or just like pizza, in this world pizza. that you've created? So in this world where um, you know, pizza has been outlawed because there's there's so much that can be done with it. Oh, and yeah. it's, it's just like take any, you know, you, you know, prohibition era, like thing, there, there's pizza speakeasies, there's this underground mm -hmm. delivery, there's all these kind of different things you can take and run with it. Um, mm -hmm. So we've had we've had other creators, you know, we start to pitch this. Well, there's, yeah, there's all it. kinds of like underworld elements that you could get in there yeah. and smuggling and things. Is it Fahrenheit 451? Or is it Soylent Green, uh, where the operator that you're following uh, finds a jar that's got like one scoop of strawberry jam in it. It's like the most <laughs> valuable thing that he I, could possibly. I, it's been a while since I've seen either of those, but I, or, or read the book even with it. I don't, I think, I think that was probably the Sorlent Green because Fahrenheit 451 was really all about the books, right? Yeah. But I think, I think there's other parts of culture that are uh, outlawed and like looked down upon too. Yeah. So I couldn't remember, but yeah, it, it sounds more like Soylent Green. And I think it's in the book. I don't think they did that in the movie, but they might've done. I don't, I haven't watched the movie of Soylent Green since fifth grade rainy day uh, <laughs> exercises. Like, I just know that they're they people. Bring, That's it. That was all. Yeah, they, they wheel, yeah. Before they had the big boards that were all screens anyway, they wheeled in on the cart. Yeah. The, uh, the giant the, CRT TV. And then here you go. Like, you know, your teacher right. had a hangover that day and they were just going to hang out. Absolutely. All right. So we're getting the uh, the warning here from producer Eric. Um, parting shots. Is there anything else you want to let us know about the book? Um, any special I mean, little? No, I think that's I mean, like the gist of it is that it, it's what 
this this story and, and this book really helped me kind of get a jump start on my own comics making journey. This was the mm-hmm. thing that um, helped me get started. And it, and it happened because I did it with friends. And that's the thing. Like comics are m- making comics is really fun. And sometimes the hardest part is just starting. It's mm-hmm. just sitting down and actually writing something. So um, my friends helped me do that. And now I've got, you know, like a dozen shorts. I've got a comic book in the works. I'm make, working on two other miniseries. Um, and it's a blast and it's, it's, it's just so much fun to do. So, you know, if you, if you have an idea for a story, get, start writing, that's it. Like just, just <laughs> start working on something. Cause that's it. You're not, you can't, you can't get started unless you get started. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, that actually, I mean, that might be a, a follow-up that we could do is, is, uh, how your journey went from, you know, uh, a writer to an editor, to a senior editor at a comic book site, to an editor of comic books, to a writer of comic books. And that we can, uh, we can yeah. definitely bring you back in because uh, this was that. fun. Yeah. So uh, this is to catch up with you guys. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm so happy. As I said, I was telling you guys before we started, like, you know, I'm so happy to see like every, all the growth and everything you all are doing with Comic-Con. So it's, it makes me so proud. <laughs> <laughs> Your babies are growing up. <laughs> nice. All right. This is James Ferguson. Uh, I'm Brendan Allen. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.